Wow, that looks cool. <laughs> Did huh? We good? Oh, hey, what up, guys? What up, Josh, Carrie? We got Jeremy, Ron, E. Brown in the house. That's all I can see from my side. Anybody else? Larry. Larry. What's up, everybody? We are doing something. Uh, hopefully, it turns out something a little different. Um, we're going to do kind of like a cartoon. I guess that's the best way I can explain it is like a cartoon kind of effect. Uh, Grand Theft Auto kind of a etching. I don't know. Like what they usually do with markers and stuff like that. So I got this biohazard sign that I just cut out by hand. Basically what I did is I just printed out. Maybe I have that right here. Oh, I thought I saved it. Maybe I didn't. Alright. Oh. Here we go. So I just printed it out. Let me see, I bite off my phone. And um, I, I cut it out of the paper, and then I actually sprayed it on my um, my vinyl here. And then I cut it one more time. So I actually ended up cutting it twice. But that gave me the template to make this. And I just cut that out with a, with a razor blade or whatever you got. So what we'll do is, I got this cleaned up now. Um, Seeing that this thing is plastic, we have found out that if you're going to spray a lot of paint, there it's probably going to like have a lot of static charge to it. So we have these dryer sheets that we found out work really good. So I'm just going to kind of rub it down with that and take some of the static off of this thing. Maybe do the whole backside too. There we go. Maybe even do. Shit, maybe even do all this because. Yeah, because what happens is once you like wipe it down with the microfiber rag, it uh, puts like a positive charge to it and the paint just wants to like do all kinds of crazy stuff. Gets all, yeah, gets all weird. But yeah, it looks like we're good. I'm going to take the biohazard sign. Um, a lot of people ask me about the vinyl, so I'll go ahead and mention it now. The vinyl is, uh, what is the vinyl? Gosh, dang it. Oh, it's on the back of this right here. Oracle. 631. Yeah, it doesn't need to be 631 because that's the color. Oh. But anything Oracle, six, I think it's all in the sixes, but 631 will work. It's just called their um, their removable removable stencil masking or something like that. But yeah, that's what this is. So I printed this out and I cut it out. I'm not sure where I was going to put it, but I think that's going to go right there. And then we'll line this out with some other stuff too, but after we lay some paint down. So let's go ahead and start with that. We're just, just going to use, you can use frisket film. I'm going to use some masking tape here. Someone said, Someone how do you... Whoa, hold on. <laughs> You're over there. <laughs> I don't oh, intercom, good. huh? Okay. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> Somebody said, I don't like to hear that. <laughs> My whole voice to the shop. Someone said, how do you get it flat like that? I have the same hood. Uh, Just scuffed it down. We scuffed it down with the 600 grit sanding sponge. And we cleaned it up. Um, we did some wax and grease, grease remover, and then we cleaned it up with some glass cleaner. So I'm just using regular masking tape right now. We're going to use that to transfer the biohazard. All right, let's take a look at this. I'm going to transfer it, put it, hopefully get this thing in the center. That looks pretty good. Go down a little bit. Now 
then I'll just go ahead and pull these off one at a time. All right. Okay, I'm just going to put this off to the side real quick, and we will introduce the pigment colors we'll be using to start coloring this thing in. So now we've masked off the biohazard sign, and that's the only thing that's going to be left black. We're going to go ahead and start with our colors over the top. Um, as you can see here, we have the uh, orange base coat powder pigment from Limeline. And what we'll do is we'll do with that. We'll go ahead and mix up the orange. What else have we got here? We got the... We're going to go with the gold as well. So we're going to take the the orange and the gold, mix those up, mix, make those two colors, and then we will uh, get those laid out. I might actually use some red too, but we'll kind of see how these two go first. But I'll go ahead and start mixing those. But if anybody has any questions, feel free. This will be the best time to, to ask. We can clear anything up that you guys might not know or anything you guys want to talk about. So right now I'm just pouring in some clear base coat, limeline clear base coat. Just putting, I'll go a little more. This is a, is this a three ounce cup? Oh, you probably don't remember. Uh, this, it's supposed to be, but I think it was smaller. Oh no, this one actually is a three ounce. Oh. Yeah. Maybe yeah, four ounce. So that, we had about an ounce in there. Where'd that orange go? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> Hard to find one right in front of you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take the orange here. We're going to take our measuring spoon. And we're mixing uh, one scoop with one ounce uh, sprayable paint. So we'll go with one scoop. We actually need to reduce this, so we'll put some urethane reducer in there as well. Okay, a couple questions. Someone says, any news on your candy colors? Yeah, they're about, um, it's going to be a little bit stale, but they're still getting put together, I guess, in another month or two, and they'll be ready. And then someone said, um, was it just a regular dryer sheet to remove the static? Yeah, it was whatever we had. You know what we have? You know that question. You know that answer better. Oh, I, I I think they're bounce brand. Bounce? Bounce brand. <laughs> yeah. So bounce works. I also, if you saw, I did it underneath too. So I don't know if that matters. I haven't kind of did the whole the whole board as well. Larry gave you a twenty dollar super chat. Oh yeah, right on Larry. And He's Ollie, here every week. Allie or Ollie gave you a ten dollar super chat. Yeah. Nice. Hope I say your name. Thank right. you guys. Appreciate that for sure. Look how nice this orange is looking. That's the regular, not the bright orange, right? Yeah, that's just the regular. Yeah, metallic. It's a, it's a metallic orange. Let's go ahead and we'll take do the same thing. About an ounce of clear base coat. We'll take the gold. Oh. <clears throat> ah. Coop. Uh, there was more than an ounce on there, so I'm going to stick a little more. There we go. Some urethane reducer. This urethane reducer that I'm using, it's pretty much, we use it across the board. Like, it's used in our primers. If we need to thin out the primer, it's um, used mostly in base coats like we're doing here. You can also thin out your clear coat if you need to, um, up to 10% usually on, on most brands. Someone said another bowl holds more than one ounce. <laughs> well, I haven't started painting yet, so that's a good one. to. I'm going to mess it up now. All right. Yeah. 
I'm just hoping that this is going to turn out good because this, I haven't really, what I'm doing here is I haven't really practiced. I practiced once the other day and it didn't look that good. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try a different approach at it. But I really didn't have the time to do it. So basically we're practicing here. So, so, if, so tonight's the different approach? It is, yeah, than I did yesterday because oh. the one yesterday did not turn out good. Okay. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to. attempt at this different approach. Yes, at this whole thing, at this whole idea that I'm trying to make happen. That you have in your head that you're trying to put on a foot panel. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. So don't be mad if we all waste our time tonight because <laughs> I don't know. It'll turn out to be something, I can tell you that. We're not going to totally destroy it here. Okay, we're going to take these two colors. We're going to put them off the side for a second. We got that cleaned up. Okay. Let me grab my airbrush. I'm just using the Iwata Neo. I was hooked to my studio, Iwata Studio um, compressor. It's just a little airbrush compressor. You can really use Harbor Freight or anything like that when it comes to the it comes to the compressor but maybe when it comes to the airbrush um stick with maybe name brand stuff but if it's the only thing you can get then do it just get it you'll figure it out someone said is that a dixie riddle cup this one is a dixie cup it's a type of dixie cup okay. all right so i'm gonna go ahead and start with the gold I'm just going to whisk our magic dryer sheet kind of just everywhere. <laughs> Give it a negative charge. <laughs> Wait, we don't want no negative energy in here. Oh, it just needs to be negative right now. <laughs> All right, so basically what I want, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix these two colors uh, together, kind of like uh, giving like, different color shades, kind of blending them together. But I kind of I want them to be chunky, like thicker on both sides, and then kind of like scallops are. You can, you'll see, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. You'll see them, me kind of painting them, but I, I'm just kind of wisping back and forth. Somebody says, "How did you transfer the biohazard from paper to tape?" then the hood uh paper so i cut it out of the paper um and i actually laid i i laid it out onto the stencil material and i sprayed it with my airbrush and then that gave me the transfer and then i cut that out with the razor blade at that point i took the tape took it off the backing with the tape and then stuck it on there pretty much anytime you see me uh, lay down a stencil it's going to be the same method i didn't do anything different uh, someone says, what's the best way to clean the airbrush after using urethane paints? Uh, I like to use lacquer thinner and then putting it in a spray bottle actually works the best, like a pump spray bottle. And then I just like, you know, just spray it through and kind of just flush it through. That's all I really do. I don't even really tear it apart every time. I'm telling you right now, this is going to turn out way different than the last one I tried. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully good, because the last one did not turn out good. Someone said, why didn't you just use the Cricut for the biohazard sign? Oh, uh, I could have. Sorry. <laughs> just sprayed you. You tried to gold dust my leg? <laughs> <laughs> What's well, going on? It was right? actually clogged, and then oh, it got okay. clogged at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I look up at you. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> um, yeah, you could you could have used a cricket. Yep. You just did it for faster. Uh, it probably would have been. I probably could have done it faster, even on the cricket. So the the fact that I'm only doing this once, I didn't mind really um, cutting it out by hand. It really only took like like 20 minutes or something. And by the time I loaded up the machine and you know got the did all the stuff on the cricket maker but this would have been an easy one for that 
All right, so looks like we got a good amount of gold on there. I'm gonna switch off to the orange. Someone says, I have a master airbrush and it said to use water to test spray. Is that really what I should do? To test spray it? Uh, I don't know why you would do that. I would put paint in it to test spray it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whatever what you plan on spraying, test it with that. Um, I've never tried the master brand, so I'm not sure. Maybe they're good. Uh, then someone says, are you using thinner between colors? Am I using what? what's that? Thinner between colors. Yes, I'm just cleaning out the airbrush, yeah. Yeah, lacquer thinner. All right, so I'm adding this orange into the gold. I'm just kind of streaking it through. the hole in my lid is plugged again because it quit spraying yep yeah, it is it quit spraying and then um the spraying really slow yeah something like a poke that way like a exacto blade oh i got one right here actually yeah sometimes these get like if it stops spraying you can take the toothpicks like a good Oh, yeah, that worked really good. Which is your favorite cricket machine? The Maker 3, probably. It's the only one I've ever used. I would, I would buy the Maker 3 if I was to buy one. If, um, it's not that much more. And I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know much about the other ones, but if you're already going to spend like 250, you might as well spend an extra hundred bucks. Someone's okay. Said, so I'm just kind of blending those together. I'm going to go back to the gold again. Someone said, have you ever done a fake patina? If so, that would make a cool live night. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I might do that one of these times. Some root beer brown. Maybe, yeah. Use some stenciling and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I think I will probably do that. If we do it, remind me that you told me to. And then we'll give you something. All right, just hitting this with gold again. I'm kind of just streaking this through. Like, See, I'm just going to kind of build up the gold right here. Yeah, I really don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm just like totally like making this up as I go. But I kind of have an idea of what I want it to look like based on what kind of other people's paint jobs have looked like. Like, yeah, I don't know. Definitely different than that because I tried to do it that way and it didn't work very good. At least not on this smaller project. project. What's that? Someone said, please add, please add ghosting with the bio. Ghosting? Like a ghosting effect? It's already going to be pretty... Um, there's going to be a lot of contrast there because that's black. So, I don't know. Maybe I can ghost something, in, but it's not going to be that at this point. But you can see here, I'm just kind of like taking the gold and kind of coming to a point there. And then just kind of streaking it through, but kind of chunking it up, you know? Kind of like what the girls do with their hair. They do the chunky. I like. 
Yeah. I'm doing highlights. You take a batch of hair, right? You turn it gold. Yeah. God. A chunk. <laughs> All right. Back to orange. We're going to hit it with the orange, and then that's going to be enough paint for a second. Same thing, just going to pick a spot, darken it up, and let it blend in. All right, I'm going to take some 16th inch lime line. I'll kind of give you an idea what this looks like a little bit closer. So you see how it kind of just looks streaked. Um, that's what I was looking for. Like, And from a distance, this will have, and once it's clear coated, hopefully it'll have a cool look. We're, at, we're obviously not done. Um, this is just the base layer of what we're doing. I'm about to lay out some tape, and we're going to add some black a uh, really thick black and we're going to kind of edge it out, kind of giving it like a, um, I don't even know how to explain what I'm doing. Um, kind of like a brushed kind of look, you know, like, like what a Sharpie would look like maybe, uh, but more of like a brushed look, like if you were to take a brush rather than an airbrush, not so faded. But yeah, that's what that looks like. Let's go ahead and lay out some tape. Someone said, what the hell are you eating? <laughs> <laughs> Ice cube. What are you oh, doing? shit. Sorry. Because he took a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. Then someone said from this angle, it kind of looks like an oil spill effect. Well, that'll be great. That'll be great with the biohazard. All right. I'm going to go ahead. So what I forgot to, what I forgot to mention is I am going to do some uh, leafing here as well. I know people still ask about the leafing and they want to see it. Uh, I guess done, but this is going to be the bronze and we're also going to maybe add some candy to it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just kind of edge out where we, where we'll do the leafing. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm like chomping my eyes. Like, right. <laughs> Well, the days are getting longer pretty much. I'll be probably eating my dinner here. <laughs> right in these guys' ear. Okay. Like, that is terrible. <laughs> what the hell? Knock it off. <laughs> Quick. All right, got that one done. Let's go ahead and do this other side. Someone said a grunge effect would be cool. And yeah, we might end up doing that because if it doesn't look that good, we'll end up uh, maybe mixing up some brown and um, figuring something out, maybe darkening it up so it doesn't look so like, I don't know. It might be pretty bland looking here, but we'll see. Good idea. Um, then someone said candy on the gold leaf. Yeah, candy on the copper leaf. And then someone said, are you adding a bunny? The What's that? Are you adding a bunny? A bunny? Uh, like a, like a hop, uh, one that hops? Did you, see, did you say bunny? Yeah. Oh, okay. Easter is Sunday. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I kind of figured Easter was over because we have our Easter. We could have done an Easter egg, huh? Someone said, um, bought my first airbrush this week. Can't wait to get started on this new journey. You're an inspiration, man. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, this stuff's not too hard. And 
as you can see, I've been doing this for a long time, like 20 years, and I'm still, I still learn stuff all the time. Like, I have no idea what this is going to look like. And usually I do, but I'm kind of like, I don't know. I'm just testing new stuff. I can't, can't keep doing the same stuff over and over again every week for you guys. So i um, always looking for new ideas. I um, always kind of wanted to try to do this style. It didn't work for when I practiced it yesterday, but I figured I'd give it one more shot. And whether it works or not, or how good it's going to look, it really don't matter to me. I know I'll learn something from it. Uh, you guys will probably learn something from it. You're confusing everybody because they are like, what the hell? Easter's over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easter's over. They're like, oh. No, man, we missed it. Easter's over. Great. I don't have Tell to cook now. <laughs> then someone said, Adam, are you hinting you secretly highlight Ashley's hair? <laughs> no, he's not going to. A Take a batch of my hair. <laughs> Only at nighttime when you're sleeping. <laughs> okay, creeper. <laughs> Just and then okay. someone said, may I, may I ask what's the timeline for clear coat after the candy or graphics are done? Um, Tell they're dry. Is that what it is? Is that the question? Can you the candy after they're done? Uh, yeah, so you'll, you'll, um, you can clear coat after. It, the the candy is going to dry fairly quickly, especially if you're spraying it with an airbrush. Um, and then you're ready to go straight to clear coat after that, if that's the question this is asking. Yeah. Uh, maybe I still didn't hear that right, but. Okay, I just wanted to hold that down place a little better. All right, let's see. Someone said, is um, is there a heat-related paint where paint changes when it's hot? Yeah, there is. It's a thermo, I think it's a thermogenic paint. Um, and there's a photo one that's, that's uh, with light. So one changes with light and one changes with heat. And we did play with that just recently and it did work it worked actually really cool um now it's like how do i implement that into a paint job that actually looks good and and works like it's supposed to but um yeah there is stuff like that it's pretty cool and then on the clear coat question it says meaning could i wait a couple days oh uh, yeah a couple days to what to after the graphics to spray the clear coat paint yeah no you don't have to wait a couple days he said could i wait yes you can yes yeah good question um you can wait a couple days i probably wouldn't wait longer than you know like uh, a week or something like that and someone said they painted their first helmet a few weeks ago because of you just wanting to know if it he said would i be wrong if i post a link to the short in the hat yeah Go ahead. No, go ahead. If you want to post something in the in the in the chat there for sure. Someone says they want to see low rider chunky candy blocks. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that. Blocks? Is that what they said? Uh-huh. Yeah, I got that stencil coming. Yeah, I think he means section, cubes. Section, section. Yeah, I think he means cubes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and match the other side to that. Someone asked if you've ever worked. Uh, oh, shoot, it moved on me. If you've ever worked on the Lumilore system. Nope, never done that. Have you ever yes. painted on glass? On glass? Uh, I've pinstriped on glass. But no, I feel like glass is hard for stuff to stick to, unless it's a well based, maybe. And uh, then for the cubes, he says, yeah, several sections of color cubes. Hmm. 
Yeah, you just created a cube stencil, so. Yeah. Cube, paint, and patina. I'll write it on the sticky. We're going to have to do something because I'm in mad thought right now trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I was thinking about doing this one opposite. Let me think here. But no, I think I'll match it up. Weighing my options here. That's let's go ahead and look. go ahead and run this line and then I'll kind of look at it. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, well, that we're just practicing. So another thing is, and I, show, I know I've showed this a few times, but if you take your X-Acto blade, lay it down, and then bring the tape up to the blade, you don't actually have to cut onto the surface. There, let's make sure that's pressed down. And we'll go ahead and I'm gonna pull this one right here. So when I'm using 16th inch tape, I do just cut it. Usually, I usually just cut it to a blunt end like that. But anything bigger, eighth inch or a quarter inch, I'll end up cutting it into a point. I feel like um, 16th inch, you can get away with just cutting it like that and it still looks good. Once it gets bigger tape, I feel like it my I don't know, it's just not, maybe you didn't take the time to cut it. I don't know. You can do whatever you want, but that's just my opinion. Okay, that's uh, kind of off-centered what I kind of planned on doing. I think we'll do, um, like, I didn't really have anything planned with this besides I knew we were going to do the leafing. Um, I might actually come up here and maybe do one more line. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm thinking about it. I feel like we need a little bit more going on right here. So maybe I'll just follow this ridge right there, the style line, to that. Yeah, that'll look good. Okay. Once again, the tape up to the blade. That way you don't have to cut on top. Okay. And then... Um... That looks good. Maybe let's see what I would be able to do here. Maybe I'll just bring one straight out from right here. Follow that ridge. And then maybe do this one. Maybe this big. Uh, let's see here. I feel like I'm going to have to do something else. Well, no, that looks all right. Let me, let me take it out a little bit. Since those are centered up and those don't match, I feel like I'd want to be offset so it doesn't look like it's in the center. That way it doesn't look like it's a mistake. I don't know. I'm going to just gonna leave it. Let's see. That's going to look fine. All right, we're going to stick with that. I'm going to get the airbrush cleaned out. We're going to load up some black base coat. Someone said, paint a hood with the rough coating that's used on bed liners. Then paint a design over it. Here's how it would look with the rough texture. Hmm. Uh, I think people have done that before. They'll do like, um, they'll take primer, put it on a low pressure, 
make a lot of texture and then you can s spray over that leaving that texture so kind of look like a granite Yeah, you can take the primer and then just turn your air pressure down a whole bunch when you go to spray it on, and then it like blotches it on. I guess that's the best way to explain it. It's kind of really blotchy, and then it um, gives it kind of like a rock-like texture, you know. Mm. And then you could once you spray a metallic over a texture like that, like if you were to spray black with a texture over that, it would and then clear it. You it would actually mute the texture out you really wouldn't be able to see it but if you were to use any kind of a metallic or a color it would um yeah you definitely see that the texture from that someone said the q a's are great because he was just cutting through the tape on his project the other day oh yeah that's a, so that's a good trick to do that and then someone asked will you be doing a lowrider style paint job in the near future yeah, I plan on. It. Yep. Maybe, maybe the next one. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do it on now. <laughs> Another one of these hoods, or yeah, you can always go back on the old lives too, because we've done the lowrider soft paint jobs. You can go back into the the library and and rewatch or watch some, if you've missed them from before. We've been doing this for straight for like eight months now. Right, so we probably have like 50 live videos or something. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not that many yet, but pretty close. Okay, so I have some black base coat loaded up in the same airbrush. Someone said, with LimeLine Clear Base, do you have to use LimeLine Reducer or will any reducer work? No, you can use any uh, urethane grade reducer. Somebody said, tell Adam if you use two, two 22s, adhesion promoter by Depot or Bulldog Paint. will stick. It will stick the glass super well. We'll take a razor blade to shave it off. Oh, really? Dang. I have some Bulldog right here, actually. Someone said, do a lowrider BMX frame. Hmm. I have that little... The little BMX frame down there that's hanging up. Someone said, "Do another one of those hat helmets and do just ridiculous low rider stuff and make it loud." Yeah, all those are great ideas. <laughs> I think we've done we've done one of those helmets in low rider style. Somebody somebody asked, "Do you always use an airbrush compressor?" For all the work you do or do you switch up to a larger compressor when doing motorcycle tanks and using guns overall well the guns will be will have their purpose so you'll need to you know uh usually apply your, apply your base coat with a gun and you apply your primer with a gun and your clear coat with a gun and then really the rest of it's done with an airbrush very seldom will i ever spray a candy out of a gun and when you do spray candies out of a gun you have to realize that um, you have to realize that it's going to act different. It's going to put it on thicker and, and stuff like that. Someone right. said, would you do a dry flake application? Um, I, I wouldn't. The only reason why I wouldn't do dry flake is because it puts on too much texture and it takes a, a lot more clear coat to get it to stand smooth before you can start your your graphics. So if you do, it works that way, but it's just a lot more work in my opinion. It just it adds a lot of texture because those flakes kind of lay in different like angles. And then you have to put enough clear coat over there, over the top to be able to sand it smooth. When it's sprayed on, it's kind of lays flatter and then it has more of a chance to be buried. So real quick, I'm just gonna, I'm going to take the airbrush. I'm going to follow these lines, but instead of being smooth with it, I'm going to um, really focus on, uh, instead of getting a blend, I'm going to get like a line to it. So I'm going to start right here. Um, I kind of, I started right there to kind of give this a back uh, shadow. And I actually forgot that I didn't want to do that. So I got started on that. 
that's okay. I'll fix that later, but it may, it may actually turn out to be a good thing. I don't know. Um, not sure why I did that, but okay. So once again, I'm not like hitting it this way and wanting to blend it out. Um, the reason being is I just want it to be really crisp. So I'm going to stay real close. And I'm going to kind of pencil sketch is what I'm going to do. That's kind of clogged up. Let's see here. I'm going to turn that air pressure down just a little bit more. So I really don't want it blowing all over the place. I want it to stay um, really concentrated. You can see I'm kind of just, I'm not trying to follow. I'm kind of just going out of the lines, kind of giving it kind of a staggered look. Kind of like what it would be brushed. But I'm literally like just right off the surface. Like I said, just giving it kind of like that pencil sketch kind of look, kind of going back and forth. Definitely hitting the tape all the way through. Someone said, that looks like me trying to paint a straight line. <laughs> well, and the reason why we're going to get away with this, because once we pull the tape, we'll, we will actually have two solid straight lines because of the tape there. Someone said, is it better to spray lime wine, metal flake over blocks than silver? Yes. I Well, you can do both, either or, but in my opinion, and it's pretty much, you can tell by looking at it that it's, you're going to have a little bit more sparkle if you do it, if you spray it over black. Um, there's a little bit of contrast there. And the, the fact that the black base does something that, um, that just makes it sparkle more really i don't couldn't really tell you the reason why but if you're using other flakes that are might maybe thick thicker flakes that are not going to cover as well then that's where you would want to use a silver base so this is supposed to look yeah yep Right here, it really don't matter because we're going to lay down some leaf. Yeah, this is supposed to look like I'm messing it up. I might be messing this thing up. Like, when we got into this thing, I told everybody, well, for, for the new viewers jumping in, we could be completely wasting our time right now. But most likely not. We'll learn some something new. I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and just shade these edges. Have you ever tried candy over a gold metallic base? Uh, yeah. Yep. That's how I used to do it sometimes. It's not much of a difference, really, if you were to use gold or silver. I guess it it really depends on what candy I guess you're using over the top. Like if you if you're using a red candy, um, and you're trying to decide between a silver and a gold, uh, if you're gonna go and you're gonna do red candy over the whole thing, then it really wouldn't make any bit of a difference. If you can't stay in the lines, this might be a good one for you. 
right? <laughs> like, oh, it's always messy. Well, here you go. That's me. I can't stand lines. Can't stand the lines? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish outlining that because I don't even know why I even started doing that, but I'm going to have to finish it. What's your opinion on House of Color for candy compared to newer brands? Um, I, I like, if I was to choose one, I would choose House of Color. But they, I've used a lot of other brands, not all of them, and they all work, so... I, the only candy that never worked for me at one point was the Cretex um, Wicked. No, nah, was it Wicked? I think it was Auto Air candies back in the days. They said that those were transparent, and there's no way they were. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, I like. I would. I have to say, I like House of Color the best. But I've used some of them, and the, all the ones I've used has worked. Definitely buying it in the concentrate and making, and then, you know, diluting it down with clear base coat is, uh, that's the way I prefer to do it at least. Is it my, uh, hey, if you mess up, back to Joe's, those of us that are starting out to not be so hard on ourselves when we screw up because you do amazing work. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see how amazing this thing is. I appreciate that. We could always add a candy to this thing and then it'll end up looking just fine. And then someone said, have you ever used an air eraser? Oh, an air eraser. Yes, I have, uh, and not an air Is one. That scratching tool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Electric. I use an electric. Oh, electric eraser. Yeah. Someone said, "When you mess up, just paint another graphic." Over the top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't like a bolt hole. <laughs> yeah, like a bolt hole. Someone said, "Any plans for Limelight to have its own candy concentrates line?" Uh. Yeah, they're gonna. It's gonna happen. Like in. Five or six weeks, probably. Yeah, a couple months. Yeah. Cheddar just gave you a $100 super chat and says, the wife hates when I use the debit card and alcohol at the same time. <laughs> so she's out of town, so I have three days before I get beat down. What? Hell yeah. Her husband's gone missing. <laughs> well, thanks, Cheddar. I'm badass. Someone said, do he you need to drink more? Huh? huh? <laughs> he needs to drink more when he, when he joins. Drink more when you join, Cheddar. Every Thursday night, like, yep. He got a <laughs> 12 pack on his porch ready for him. <laughs> Someone says, do you use just plain latex gloves? If they said, I always say I'm going to buy some, but I never do. Yeah. Are, am I just using plain? They're not latex, they're nitrile. Oh. Yes, but yeah. Okay. Yes, I use nitro. Nitro. Oh. Not nitro. Oh, I don't know. See, that's why I asked you. <laughs> I think they're called nitro gloves, though. I don't know if they make Oh, no, they're nitro. You're right. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that. They don't make latex very often because a lot of people are allergic to them. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean the black base coat out of this. <laughs> Someone said cheddar with the big cheddar. Cheddar, you stud. Aha, uh -huh, that's hilarious, cheddar. Damn, cheddar, rock on. Someone said we lost sound for a minute. Can they hear us now? Someone asked, how many colors of candy do you think the initial run will be? Um, it's going to be three colors. But you'll be able to mix uh, many other colors from those three. He's going to make it go back to primary elementary school days. Yeah, you're going to have to learn your primary colors. Learn your primary and secondary and tertiary colors. Somebody said... There's a question. Let's see. Someone said, signed up for the upcoming class in Albuquerque with Banderslice. OMG, looking forward to it. Y'all should check it out. Adam, your comments. Yep, I've been to that. I know Rob actually very well. Yeah, but awesome. You're going to learn a lot from that class. Yeah, you went there and then Rob came and visited us. Yep. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have to spruce this up with something. Um. Oh, another thing I was going to do, I was going to put some X's in it. Okay, I'll do that after this. But yeah, let me go ahead and pull that off here. That was a question that I lost. So someone says, what's your opinion on decanting spray paint for airbrush use? I have a lot of Montanan cans paint. Montana? I don't think Montana, but what's your opinion on decanting spray paint for airbrush use? I don't really know much about that. Once again, I, um, you know, and I, and I was thinking about getting into more spray painting stuff, uh, but there's not a whole lot of stuff available in the can. Um, usually it's like not really base coats. It's not like automotive base coats that's in there. It's like more like, uh, uh, like has a clear coat in it too. And so, yeah. He said yes. It is um, Montana. He says I have a lot of Montana cans. Paint. Yeah, and that's not really the same stuff for what we're doing here. Uh, I don't really know much about that, but it's not. It's more. That's more for like graffiti uh, artwork. Roman, Roman just sent you a fifty dollars super chat. Yeah, and hell yeah. Said, You've helped me so much on my airbrush slash painting journey. Thanks. Gosh, and I appreciate that. Chris just sent you a $50 super chat and said, thank you once again. Holy crap. Thank you. Look at you started, Cheddar. Yeah, that's badass. Thank you, guys. That means a lot. So I forgot I was going to put a couple of X's in here. To like, um, to, I don't know why. That was just my idea. Yeah, no, I was gonna. I was, oh man, what's happening here? I lost my tape. Go back there. Someone, the, the guy that asked about that cans of paint, he said he's a total graffiti guy. Oh, yeah, see, that's right. yeah, that's yeah, deal, but that's cool. yeah, that's cool. But maybe you don't want to use that same stuff though, or maybe you maybe it'll work. I don't know, could work out. Okay, I got a couple X's there. I'm gonna, I wanted to do that while I still had the black paint, which I don't have the black paint there. Someone said, what's your go-to spray gun for paint and then clear gun? Um, I used to use the Limeline 1.3 all the way around. I use that for everything right now. I'll use it for my base coats. My, I'll even use a different one for my primer. Um, it's the gun that we sell and that's pretty much why I use it all the way around. You can use, you can get away with a lot. Like you don't need a, 
a four or five hundred dollar gun in order to do what we're doing here at all. Pitch that out. Let's go ahead and Guy, Smith Shot Racing, sent you a $5 super chat. Oh, yeah, right on. Thanks, dude. And then someone said, what's a ballpark price of how much a candy and flake panel paint job costs for fenders, tanks, fairing, side covers on a Dyna slash Softail slash FXR? Uh, that was just a tank, fenders, and side covers? Is it? Uh, fenders, tank, fairing, and side covers. Oh, fairing. Okay. When you say fairing, that could add a lot. Um, uh, yeah, that's, there's too, it's too, there's too many, like there's too many different fairings and stuff, but anywhere between with a fairing, anywhere between 3000 and probably, um, eight to 10,000. I don't know. You can even say but 8,000 probably. It, dep it depends on the fairing, depends on the paint job. Um, depends on the artist, quality of work. All right, I'm just gonna want to add some more kind of an industrial kind of a look to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some candy and go ahead and lay that out right. Maybe we'll go right there. All right, I mixed up, we mixed up some uh, red, gold, and I put a drop of blue, hoping to get like a brown. I'm just kind of guessed on it, let's see. I made it pretty potent, there we go. I decided I was gonna go with orange, again, an orange candy, but maybe we'll go with like more of a brown, a couple drops of blue. Gonna turn that into a brown. All right, let's go ahead and load the airbrush up. Yes, yeah, from Japan. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that says, babe. You know, it's, you always put your phone up to it for the translate, Google Translate. Trying to decipher some foreign text there, huh? Yeah. All right, so I got some of that custom brown candy I put in there. I'm gonna over reduce it with some urethane reducer. That way we can really mild this this out. I don't want this to be, uh, I want it to be pretty mild. Oh, nice. Mmm. From Japan or what? Uh-huh. Right on. We actually have some of our products in Japan right now. We have the metal flake and the glass, but soon there'll be the, this, all these stencils, this stencil will be there. Um, the tape will be there and a couple other, the products to start Well, then we'll start getting the pigments there as well. But yeah, on Amazon, um, Japan, just pretty got on there. Hoping to make some more sales. So if you're from Japan and you want some flake, it's right there. Usually next day you can get it. Let's check to see how, oh yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. That looks better. We did something positive here. This wasn't looking good. No, it's looking fine. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off. Well, actually, I got some work to do here because I did forget that there's black underneath here and I edged it with black, which is kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe I'll mix up some white base coat over reduced. Larry said, but no hoodies. I'm working on it. I tried. Really? I have. Uh, I did. I reached out to a couple of people. Oh, you did? Yes. Thanks to Tina. What I, about those? Uh, what about those fancy ones we saw? The ones with the at Roosters. That brand. Did you look into that? Yeah, I am not sure how they have them made. We saw these cool like button up. I don't know, pool shirts or something. So it's a work. It's a work shirt. Is actually what it is. Oh, work yeah. shirt. But it's like a printed work shirt. Yeah, so I tried looking into that to make some lime line ones, and I couldn't find where you can make custom ones. They just have other. Oh, they didn't have one with limes on it or something. No, they had like different beer yeah. ones, and. But they had roosters printed on theirs. Though. I know. I searched. I'm not sure. They have to be able to do them custom. I'm working on it. I. I hey, promise. you hold her to it, Larry. <laughs> I am. Oh yeah, hold her to it. Larry's getting the first hoodie. <laughs> on me give her hell larry <laughs> i really want him too i know I, I, I just don't have the time to do it really all right is this over reduced enough i think so uh yeah someone said have you ever heard of or used the roth metal flake product line they sell spray cans of automotive base coats and canned flake and candy Oh, what brand is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I um, I know of them. Yes, I've never, I've never used it though. Um, once again, when you get into spray cans, you just got to be careful that you're not using anything that has like, uh, that like has a clear in it because you don't want it to harden up. Because when you go to shoot the 2K clear over the top, it could wrinkle. So, like mixing spray paint with automotive is not usually a good idea. But um, I think the Roth is okay, but I don't know enough about it myself. Okay. That'll look like something. We'll end up canyon over the top of that. But that at least fixes that problem. I have a very small job that requi requires flake. Can I spray it directly over primer or must I base coat it first? Um, you could spray it over primer and um, it's going to look just fine. If it's a customer's job or something like that, or if it's a bigger job like a motorcycle, I probably just would definitely base coat it. Wouldn't skip that step, but something small or something personal that you're looking just to get done. I don't see a problem with that at all. Thanks, Eric. I'll check out that YouTube channel and see if he has some cool stuff. Evan said, okay, like in quotations, quotations. <laughs> That'll look like something if that doesn't sum up all my airbrushing attempts. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to end up with something you know, here. You this guy fight saying funny stuff. Well, it's true. I was kind of scared going into this thing anyways. 
But I figured no matter what, the leaf is going to save it because the leaf's going to look amazing. But we got to get moving here because are we going to be over two hours or what? Because I know we start to lag. We're at an hour and what? An hour and five minutes. Oh, nice. So I'm just going to use this grunge stencil right here. And I'm going to kind of just grunge out these lines because I feel like at this point it'll look good. A little bit here and there. And we're going to pull that tape too. So Okay, nothing. Oh, let's get it right here too. And I'm gonna pull this tape, and we'll go ahead and just do a light coat of the candy blend over the top. All right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna kind of lightly just blend over all this with this candy into the center. We'll go just like that. Those print stripe lines just a little bit, fading them in, not too much because we don't want to drown it all out. Okay, let's get on to some, I'll, I'll wait to pull that because I might want to do, we'll see what it looks like. Um, I, it may need to be a little brighter. I'll kind of pull up the edge to see what kind of contrast we have um, with the black compared to what we got there. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and grab some masking tape. Mask out everything around. We don't want to put leaf on, which we just want to put leaf here and here. Someone said, have you ever done any true fire like the Mike Lavelli style and do you enjoy doing it? Yeah, I actually do. I really like it. Um, I Did we do it last week? We did fire like two two weeks ago or something. Yeah, we did. <laughs> 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 Holy shit. Good Lord. Yeah, um you can go uh, check back on one of the last lives. I can't breathe. You can't breathe? Uh, I can't breathe. Oh breathe. <laughs> so I can't read. No, I can't read either. <laughs> you know this. Um yeah, you check back on our previous lives. You can rewatch them. Um, and one of those, I think it was. You you fire. Yes, I love it. Yeah, I love fire. Um, I got burnt out on it. Yeah. 
yeah. no pun intended. <laughs> uh, I got burned out a couple times back when it was like really popular, but then I then people didn't want it anymore. And then I'm like, damn, that was good money because you can really whip them out fast. And uh, you know, some of them didn't even want a skull or nothing; they just wanted the fire. And it's like, oh, shoot, I can do that in like three hours. Yeah, if you can learn to do that, I mean, people still, people still want fire. Um, they just want other stuff with it usually, like, you know, maybe they'll want a bird or something like that. You can do some kind of a silhouette style of a bird or or skull or something. Um, easy enough. You can just kind of mix it in with the fire. I actually thought about maybe doing it with this, but then. Cause I could easily like just bring a little bit of fire off of that. I feel like it might be out of place on this particular on this thing. And it's not really what I want to look like, but it, I could save it to by doing that. I still might do that. We'll see. Is that the masking tape over here? Mm -hmm. Oh, right here. I'm trying to steal my masking tape. Um, I, if it's a, if it's, I'm edging graphics out, I always use vinyl. It's a little bit sharper than what you would get with like a crepe tape or yeah, paper tape. They were checking out the Amazon store and it shows that the green spinner is still on there. When will we have the new one up? It yeah, is. it's that's what you're gonna get the new one. You just need to change the picture. I need to change that picture, and I plan actually to do that tomorrow. But you're gonna get the new upgraded version at this point. But I say upgraded, but if you have the green one, it's not that upgraded. I mean, it's just small details we've changed because we had to change who was making them. So just because you got the old ones doesn't mean they're not good. They're still just as good. They're going to do the same thing. Okay, so I got that masked out. I'm going to go ahead and switch out my airbrush. He said, hey, Alan, have you ever seen some of that slick guy content? He's kind of a weirdo, but lays down some decent artwork for it. Or it's him on there, so he's saying, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Who's he talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll have to check it out. Or maybe I already did. I don't know. All right. So I've got the limeline sizing glue here. And we need to mix that 50-50 with water. You see it's pretty thick. Someone said the pad split on his spinner. Do you sell the pads in the 5,000 grit? 
separate? Uh, yeah, just have just hit me up on Instagram and uh, give me your address, and I'll I'll get you another pad, a couple of them. You should have got two. All right, let's go ahead and load up. So I got my own separate airbrush for this. This airbrush is just for the glue. Glue brush? This is the glue brush, yep. Oh, I only got one. I only got one? Oh, man. Well... So apologize about that. Yeah, hit me up and we'll um, definitely get that squared away. All right, so glue's in. Got to mix 50-50 with water. Now I'm going to, now very important, I'm going to just layer it out light, like a tack coat. Okay, just like that. Next one. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a second to kind of tack off because the first coat, it wants to, starts to bunch up and you don't want that to happen because it, it creates a texture. Once you lay down the leaf, it's gonna take on that texture and when you go to spin it, it's not going to look right. You wanna get it as smooth as possible. So that's already dry. We'll go with another light coat. Someone says, how does the 3,000 versus the 5,000 grits affect the appearance of the leaf? I, you know, I've always liked the 5,000 better. I'm, I've, I tested both of them. Um, 5,000 just makes more sense. So I've switched it to where if you do buy a lime line, you're going to get two 5,000 grit pads rather than uh, you, used to be, you used to get a 5,000 and a 3,000, which 3,000 still works. 5,000 is better. Follow that. Let's get some more glue in. Okay, we're gonna get, let that set up just for another second. It's starting to get tacky. I think we'll give it one more coat. that another second so we're gonna be using the bronze leafing on this I feel like it's gonna match better um, kind of has a bronze look hence the name bronze and uh, the, the key with this is to you see how nice and, and smooth it is you know not much wrinkles when you lay this down you want it to lay down the same way you don't want it to like lay over itself it's really not that hard to do, but uh, it does take a little bit of practice. Okay, that's starting to get tacky now to where we're ready to go. Oh, whoops. What's going on there? Get rid of that guy.
gonna shut that fan off. It's blowing that leaf everywhere. Uh -huh. We're gonna double leaf this. That's the nice thing about using this method with the sprayable glue uh, being a water-based is that we're gonna be able to layer another another leafing right over top of this to um, protect it to it, when we go to spin it that's uh, we'll give it more of um, a thickness so it has a less chance of burning through but you do want to keep moving on this because as you're going this glue is is starting to set up and you only have you know a matter of maybe i would say five minutes i'll Kind of depends on the temperature, how heavy you sprayed it, how many coats you put on. Let's see if I can get this all in one shot. Oh, no, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, maybe. Looks like it kind of broke on me right there. See that split right there? So we'll go ahead and take that piece, fill that in. This is, it's imitation foil is what this is. It's made out of an aluminum and um, it's made out of aluminum and there's something else that actually makes that color, uh, but it's aluminum and that's the reason why it spins compared to other, like if you were to, to use like a real gold or a real bronze or something like that the chances of it spinning very good is less likely. Um, when I found this stuff, I went through a lot of different brands, a lot of different manufacturers, trying to find the one that actually spun the best. And it was most user-friendly. User and this is the one I came up with and I found that I, that I thought personally was the best after looking around. Someone said, what situations would you double leaf if not for a problem with the leaf the first layer? If it's a customer's paying paint job, I'd double leaf it because it's easy enough just to do it. Um, if you're just kind of like making artwork and you just want to, I don't know, you're just messing around and maybe single leaf it. I think I would double leaf it all the time. Do you see I'm kind of just pushing it in right now? flattening it out and then we'll roll it here in a second uh, how long is it someone asked how long is, is the it? glue good for after it's reduced um it's it's uh it's good it, it's there's no there's no time window there i mean once it if it, you leave the lid open and it evaporates then it's you'll have to add more water I had some silver leaf on there and I just shoved it in there. No shoving. Dang it. It's okay. We're going to, oh, look, another one right there. I don't want to drive any more up in there. Yeah, it looks like I had a little bit of silver leaf stuck to that. Kind of shoved it in there. We're going to leave this one more time, so no worries. Really, you want to concentrate on getting this burnished really good to make it look uniform and to push your edges in. Because if you don't plan on pinstriping this, you really need to have that those edges tucked in really close, push down into that glue. If not, when you go to pull the tape, it's gonna like give it a jagged edge. Which in this case, it actually might look all right, but not really. It's not gonna look. You'll you'll notice that it's everybody will notice it's not it's supposed to be like that. So try to get it in there, try to get it right. I feel like this would even work just doing the one 
one layer, but we'll go ahead and double layer this anyways. We got this silver that's kind of stuck in. Oh, here it comes. Oh, it's gone. Nice. Kind of where I patched up right here looks a little chunky. Not that great. See how it kind of went together right there? Just by using the tool and burnishing that out, kind of makes it look more uniform. Okay, I probably would have spent a couple more minutes on that, but let's go ahead and move on. We'll go and leave and uh, spray one more layer of glue on. Let's kind of get this all. How many coats of clear does it take to bury the leaf? Uh, it only takes a couple of coats, two to three coats. Very, very thin. The glue also, as you can see, goes on super thin too. Um, so it's not really adding much of a thickness there to be able to have to carry the, to build over. But once again, we got to do these in coats so we don't oversaturate that glue. It, looking good. Oh yeah. As you give this a minute or two to dry, um, you can tell it starts to tack up more, but when you first touch it, it's still wet where it's not, it doesn't really get to attack. Someone says, is there a way to save it if you start laying leaf and you find out you oversprayed the glue? Uh, yeah, you can probably clean it up with a razor blade afterwards, possibly. And then, ever notice difference in spinning sooner versus later? Yeah, I would prefer to spin sooner rather than later. Um, but I don't know if that's necessary. But definitely, if you have the chance to spin it sooner, like right after, just do it then. Sizing glue is water-based. Do you clean your airbrush with water or lacquer thinner? With water. You can also use glass cleaner too to like. I'll clean it out with water usually though, and then glass cleaner like that, maybe towards the end or towards the end of the week when you're done. Can you hear that's starting to get tacky now? But not stringy. Once again, if it does string up, then it's you've applied it too wet and you gotta wait, you know, but we've been doing pretty light coats on this. All right, let's go with the last coat here.
Oh, I could use that piece right here. Okay, there we go. All right, that turned out pretty clean. Let me grab my brush. Where is that brush? Why do I always lose that thing? Right here. Once again, just kind of pound straight down on it. That way we're not wiping away um, any of the leaf that needs to be there. Really pressing it down into the edges. You can see how smooth this next layer laid down. Laid down really nice. Okay, once you kind of got that all down there, then you can start wiping it. Push those bristles down up into that corner, pushing that leaf in there. Then you can just wipe it like this and make those two, burnish those to make them look uniform. Now the nice thing is we do have that layer underneath that if we do kind of wipe any of this away, um, hopefully it's not in the same spot where we were missing it before. Uh, then it, it wouldn't be a, really a problem. Same thing when we go to spin this. Uh, we're going to have that layer of protection there in case we hit it up a little bit too hard. Um, or maybe we had a little bit of debris in there in the glue. If like, there's a little bit of debris in the glue, what it'll do is it'll tear and uh, it'll tear that layer of that leaf off. Um, someone's asking... Let's see, is there a certain number of days you should wait before leafing over clear to avoid gases and shrinking? Uh, I don't think, I haven't never had a problem with that. As long as you're using 2K stuff, I've, I've even leafed over clear coat that's only been clear for a day. Never had a problem with that. And then do you ever candy paint the leaf to a different color? Yeah, and we're going to do that. We're going to use that same brown mixture that I made and we're going to throw some candy up over the edges of this kind of blending it into the center uh, with that same color. So yeah, you'll see that happen here in just like just a couple minutes. And someone said, do you still paint customer spikes or, or do you mostly focusing on managing your light line? Uh, I mostly manage the brand and then also doing these takes a little bit. Um, doing the editing and uh, trying to make other I have another video that's coming out um, that's fully edited kind of a little different video than what I've done before on a Simpson helmet that I'm painting so that's coming down I'll be coming out on YouTube here pretty shortly uh, so a lot of editing to do but yeah that's but the answer is no, I usually don't do customers' bikes very often. Every once in a while, somebody will hit me up and then maybe they'll have like a chopper tank. I'm like, oh, I can use that for content. And then, yeah, I'll pick it up. But there's a few guys that I do their bikes. I've kind of always done their stuff. So I'm still doing them. They just know that it takes a long time. Oh, really? No, I would love to, though. Write that down. You write that down? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Yeah, because I think we lose the chat after this is gone. Does it, or does it stick around? I can't remember. We used to lose the chat after when you rewatch it. You couldn't watch the chat. But I think that has maybe since changed. Somebody said candy directly on the leaf, not clearer than the candy. Question mark. No, yep, directly on the leaf, yeah. So we're gonna pull this tape here in a second, and then we'll end up uh, canning up around our lines here after we engine turn it. But I think we're about there. I think we are there. Like I said, you really can't spend too long doing this. Like, you just really wanna make sure getting those edges tucked in if you're not gonna if 
you're not going to pinstripe the edges. Ten minutes? No, not ten minutes. Just just a few minutes. Really, as long as you, when you touch the glue, like because we sprayed it right here, where you touch the glue, if it strings up, um, or if it like tacks off into your hand, where you can feel it's like took some of the tackiness with it, it's not dry enough. Um, or you may have over applied it. Um, so keep, you know, keep a look at that too. It should be drying fast. If you have to wait a while, you're probably over applying it, which is going to cause a texture and it's not going to allow it to, to lay out really smooth like this. It's going to have like a bumpiness to it, which when you go to engine turn it, that's going to make a difference in how it looks. Once again, when you're pulling the tape, you want to kind of pull it away from the edge. Like you wouldn't want to pull it this way. It's going to make a cleaner cut. But yeah, that turned out really clean right there. Let's go ahead and... All right, cool. That turned out pretty good. Let's go ahead and finish it one more time. Give me the extra leaf off. Uh, so this is the leaf swinger. Leaf swinger. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late, huh? Leaf spinner, uh, 5,000 grid on there with the foam pad in between. So let's go ahead and we'll line it up, give it a spin. Oh, yeah, it looks like that's been pretty good. All right, let's try to get an angle out here so you guys can see it. Someone said, when you clear over your flake and you do three or so coats of clear, how much time is in between those coats of clear? 30 minutes or like a full cure? Between the coats of clear coat? It's, um, it kind of depends on the temperature, what kind of uh, hardener you're using, what kind of paint, how, what kind of gun. There's a lot of different variables, but... Um, Kind of like what I explained with the glue is if you were to touch in an inconspicuous spot, uh, maybe something you have taped off on the tank or the part that has gotten enough as much clear as the rest of the part, you can touch it. And if it strings up, you need to wait longer. If you touch it and it's tacky, you're good to go with another coat. So that's usually how I test it because, I, you know, everybody has different temperatures, different humidity and stuff like that. That's going to affect how long it takes. But generally, I would say 15 minutes um, or so would be a good place to probably start as far as time waiting in between. You can, you can see, see how nice that. 
that turned out there. Let's go ahead and do this one too. All right, that's good. Let's go ahead and throw the candy over the top like we talked about. Okay, switching back to the other airbrush with the custom brown candy that we made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of come around these edges right here and blend into the center. I'm not going to fill in the whole thing. Just the edges. You can see the difference there. Mm -hmm. Looks good both ways, but I think feel like this gives it just a little more depth. You could cover the whole thing too. Um, I feel like this makes it look a little more dynamic because you've got that nice blend going on. Yes, that's pretty much the color I made right here. Uh, you, this could be darker too because I could have actually made it more concentrated. But kind of wanted to make it a little lighter. That way it's not darkening it up too much. All right, maybe I'll take this right here and then... Those edges are done. Okay, let's take a peek at the biohazard sign. We'll see how much contrast we have here. Let me flip that fan on. Someone said cough. Uh, awesome cough relief is fun too. Yeah. <laughs> it's all fun. It's all fun. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Is this going to be enough contrast to make it look good? Oh, yeah. That'll look good. What I'm looking at is I didn't want that to appear about the same color as the black underneath. But it seems like between the two, it'll look good. So, yeah, let's, let's do it. Someone said, what do you do with these panels when you're done? Uh, they sit in a box right there. <laughs> they usually hang up. But, They're usually on the wall. Yeah. Someone said giveaways? Yeah, I wouldn't mind giving some away. Someone said the leaf and the honeycomb complement each other in a weird way. They like it. The leaf and the honeycomb? Uh -huh. Yeah, it does, huh? Well, there it is. That didn't turn out half bad. It's kind of not exactly what I was thinking, but no, it kind of is. But there we go. You can see we used the uh, candies, a couple of colors, the pigmented colors, some tape. Yeah, 
That's not a bad look. What do you think, Ashley? Would you think that was going to happen? You were like, were you like, uh oh, like me? <laughs> like, oh man, it's going to be not good. I see X's and O's on there, though. Yeah. That makes it cute. Yeah. <laughs> That's for you. <laughs> All right. There's a couple of questions on okay. here. Someone says, When you peel away the decal, uh, but it leaves decal residue, how do you fix that? Um, you probably want to change the type of vinyl that you're using. It's probably not a removable vinyl. It's not easy, to be honest. Um, I always find myself that I have to clear it with some of that blue residue and then like fix it after, but... Maybe you can try some wax and grease remover with a, with maybe, yeah, I don't know. I've dealt with it before and I hate it. It's, it's, it's terrible. Sorry, that's happening to you. <laughs> um, someone said the customer wanted him to gold leaf a shifter. Gold leaf the shifter? He said, I can't imagine even how to approach that. Hmm. And someone said, uh, how does the flake look over a silver base coat? It still looks good. I feel like it has, it's missing a little bit of pop, though. I think I'm bl with black base coat with the limelight uh, silver metal flake over the top, it, it gives a little bit more of a sparkle. All right, Eric. Eskimo Joe's. Got it written down. I will check it out. And then, let's see, they said, that's killer. Nice work as always. Badass. I like it. Sick as always. And always thank you for another week. Give your time and knowledge. Awesome. How do I stop water build up in my airbrush? I'm new to it. Um, you can get one of those inline filters that hook right to the bottom of your airbrush. Do you ride motorcycles? Are you, your rides all custom painted? Not all of them, but yeah, I do ride. Appreciate the help. I plan on making another order soon. Enjoyed watching your video. Talking to you earlier on Instagram about the runs that I got on my Fender. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, probably wait longer uh, between coats and then 60 degrees. isn't. You need to get that area warmer. It's going to be hard to get it to not run at that point. Can't wait to get my hands on the candy. How about pearl clear coat gold? Uh, we do have pearls, a gold pearl. Yeah. We, if you, yeah. Um, I'm trying to, if that's what you're asking. You can always mix that with a clear base coat and then clear coat it over that. Yeah, the um, that would just be a a, a, per, a base coat because you really wouldn't put it. But uh, yeah, check it out. Maybe we have something that you need. If not, you just you would just find a uh, a powdered pearl, gold pearl. Oh, oh yeah, that would, yeah, that would definitely that would look good. Appreciate the videos and your products. Is it okay to mix the flake and clear and use as needed? Uh, I would just mix up the flake in the clear coat at, as you need it. Like if you're going to only spray one part, then just, just mix the metal flake into the clear coat. Because really you're using clear coat, two part clear coat you should use. You can still mix it with clear base coat and it will last. Um, but it's always better to have stuff, something saved in powder form rather than in liquid. So just mix up the flake that you need. Vinyl cutter do you use? Uh, we use a Cricut cutter, Maker Three, Cricut Maker Three. This was cut. This was hand cut, though. It was only I only needed to do one, so it's just as easy just to cut it by hand. So if you don't have a Cricut cutter and you don't have a vinyl cutter, it's 
to be honest with you, a lot of times it's not necessary. All right. Thank you, everybody, you for, the for the super chats. Yeah, thanks for Definitely the super chats. Definitely appreciate that. that. Helps a ton. I'm going to look at apparel. I promise I'm going to find one day. Just search it out for y'all. But that's it. All right. We'll see you guys next Thursday with something else. Yeah, see you guys next Thursday. Happy Easter, everyone.